So I recently did a video showing how to use the DJS commander library to handle commands and events. One thing that I pointed out was that the library supports subcommands. So today we'll be taking a look at how to create subcommands and subcommand groups for our Discord boss. Before we start, if you don't already have a command handler set up, then I highly recommend you check out the previous video, which will be linked down below. Now, if you're using DJS Commander, one other thing you should check is the version of the library and make sure it's at least version 0.0.45. In my case, I haven't updated this. So to update it, open up your terminal and type npm install DJS commander at latest. Now our library is at version 0.0.45, which should fix the bugs mentioned before. Now let's move on to subcommands. Before we create the subcommand, let's first take a look at the structure of a subcommand. For this example, I'll use Dino's giveaway command. And as you can see, the giveaway command has a few slash commands. This is really helpful when you want to have different functionality all under one command. I like to call the primary command the base command and the command after that, the subcommand. However, in some cases, we also have a subcommand for the subcommand itself. In that case, we first have a base command, then we have the subcommand group, then finally, we'll have the subcommand. If that sounds confusing to you, don't worry, we're gonna put this into practice and we're gonna start slow. So back in VS Code, let's create a file inside the commands folder, and I'm gonna call this configure.js because my slash command name is gonna be configure. As always, our command file is going to first of all export an object and the first property is going to be data. This will define the structure of our command. In this case, we're going to be using the slash command builder class. So let's go ahead and import that from discord.js. Once you have that imported, let's set data to a new instance of the slash command builder class. And first of all, we're going to set a name for this command using the set name method. And we're going to call this configure as mentioned before. Next, let's add a description using the set description method, and I'm going to set this to configure some stuff. I should mention that this description is required, but it doesn't really matter when you're using subcommands because it's not really shown at all. So this is our base command structure set up, and now we're going to look at how to set up a subcommand. So let's chain another method called add subcommand, and this will give us access to the subcommand with a bunch of methods. So the first method we're going to use on this subcommand is of course the set name method. And this is going to be user because I want my slash command to be slash configure then user. So let's go ahead and set a description as well using set description. And I'm going to set this to configure a user. Now this is plenty to register a command. However, to make sure our application doesn't crash on startup, we'll go ahead and add a function right before data called run. Now this may be different for your own command handler, but for DJS commander, this function must exist for the bot to be able to go online. So let's go ahead and save our file and take our bot online. I'm going to use nodemon and now it says registered command configure. So let's go to discord and check this command out. So if I type slash configure, it will show the configure user command with the description that was set. As I mentioned before, the base command description doesn't really matter because it's not even shown in Discord. Okay, so let's say we want to handle this subcommand. If I try running it right now, I'm just going to get an error saying the application did not respond. That's because we're not handling this command. It's actually pretty simple to handle this command. So let's go back to our code. And the first thing that we're going to do is destructure interaction from our run function. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and define subcommand and this will be interaction.options.get subcommand. So every time a person runs this command and uses a subcommand, this subcommand variable is going to store the name of the subcommand as a string. This also means if you have multiple subcommands, you'll have to conditionally check for what subcommand to handle. For now, let's use an if statement and say if subcommand is exactly equal to user, then in this case, we are going to reply to this interaction and say configuring user. Of course, based on your subcommand, you will have your own functionality over here. Now, let's say we want to add an option to this subcommand right here. Well, right after the set description method, we'll add another method 
and you'll of course set this based on your option type. In my case, since it's a configure user command, I'll chain a method called add user option. And just like our subcommand, this will give us access to the option itself to which we can start chaining methods. So the first method is going to be set name, and this is going to be target user. Then we can chain another method called set description, and this is going to be the user you want to configure. Finally, I'll add set required to true. Now to make sure this update is reflected appropriately on Discord, we need to go ahead and update the description itself. I'll now save the file and check my terminal. So it does say the command configure was edited. So let's go back to Discord and try running the command again. So this time there's an option called target user. And of course we can mention a user inside over here. If I try running this command, we're going to get a reply saying configuring user because that's what we added in our code. Okay, now let's move on to subcommand groups. As I mentioned before, if you want to add a subcommand to a subcommand, you must have a subcommand group as its parent. So let's say we want to configure slash configure user. And then let's say we wanted to add a subcommand for user called role. Well, in this case, we're going to have to change the user from being a subcommand to a subcommand group. And then we're going to set role to become a subcommand. So let's put that into code. We're first of all going to change add subcommand to add subcommand group. And I'm going to change this variable name to properly reflect that as well. So I'm going to press F2 and change this to subcommand group. And because subcommand groups cannot have options, I'm going to go ahead and completely cut this. Now, because subcommand groups have subcommands, let's go ahead and add another method called add subcommand. And this will give us access to the subcommand for which we'll set the name to role. And then we're going to set the description. And the description is going to be configure a user's role. And of course, I'm going to paste the option that I copied earlier. And on top of this add user option, I'm going to add another option called add role option. And this is going to have, first of all, the name of target role. It will have a description of the role you want to configure for a user. And finally, I'm going to set required to true. If I save my file, it's going to format the code. However, it still looks very messy. Unfortunately, there's nothing much that you can do about this because Discord's way of structuring slash commands is pretty awful in itself. Now the command did not update, so let's go ahead and edit the description. So I'm going to add just another dot and save this file. It should now edit our configure command. And if I go back to Discord and try running slash configure user, we now have a command configure user role. And this has two options. Okay, so this is cool and all, but how do we handle this subcommand group with its own subcommand? Well, back in our code, what we can do is we can define another variable and I'm going to call this subcommand group. And instead of get subcommand, this is going to be get subcommand group. Now I'm going to update the first condition to be if subcommand group is equals to user, then we are going to check for the subcommand. Now I'm going to say if subcommand is exactly equal to role, then we can reply and we're going to say configuring users role. Let's now save this file and try running this command again. So this is how you handle subcommands and subcommand groups. If you guys want to learn how to host your Discord bot, then check out this video.